Hi everybody, it's Katie back with another episode of my vlog. And today I wanna to talk a little bit about why I am against the idea of perfection or even the possibility of achieving perfection or being a perfectionist. Um, you may have heard me in the past refer to myself as a recovering perfectionist. Um, I definitely was a perfectionist in a previous iteration of myself. I would constantly beat myself up about things not being exactly the way I wanted them to be, or I would get myself all stressed out about things not just being how I wanted them to be. Um, and it's a trap. It's terrible. It's an awful mindset to um, constantly be beating yourself up about making things um, perfect because the concept of perfection, um, it just doesn't exist. People are messy and have all kinds of emotional issues and do unexpected things. And if you like people, um, you have to be ready to just deal with that chaos and the mess of humanity. And you have to throw the idea of being perfect or the idea of perfection as an achievable, um, goal or endpoint out the window. Um, one of the things that seems to go hand in hand with perfectionism is control freakishness. And I fully admit, I also am a recovering control freak. Um, one of the things that really made me come back off of that was having kids. Um, anyone who has kids will totally attest to the amazing lesson in loss of control that having children is in your life. Um, it's another amazing lesson in the impermanence of material objects as well, but no, that's another vlog for another day. Um, but it really started for me when we had kids, um, when our oldest was born, I just all of a sudden realized, wow, I am not in control of this at all. Um, beginning with the process of labor and delivery, whoo, it was physically painful, but even more so it was very difficult for me emotionally because I was just absolutely not in control of what was happening at all. And there was nothing I could do to stop it. And I just had to go on that ride. Um, so that was a big one, right? Um, and then there've also been other major points in my life that have, uh, you know, just delivered the message of you can't be in control and things can't be perfect. Um, Sean having a stroke was a huge one. Um, the coronavirus lockdown is another one. Um, things aren't the way we want them to be right now. Um, and that's okay. It sucks. Um, we can, do as good as we can given the circumstance, but I'm not gonna sit around beating myself up trying to make um, pre-coronavirus, uh, you know, life happen right now because that's just not possible. So there's some things that have to get let go um, and that's okay. Uh, as I say, I used to be the type of person who wanted to be able to just handle everything and to have it be exactly my way and exactly the way I wanted it. And that's just not possible, not without working yourself to death. And I don't want to be, that guy. Um, so shout out to my friend, Kara Lee, who years ago made this homemade bracelet with a stamp that said imperfect is real, or maybe it was imperfect equals real um, on the bracelet. And that really stuck with me um, until now, <laughs> um, because that is really so true. I can't think of a single thing in real reality that's perfect. And I mean, I know I use the word perfect, like this is a perfect movie, whatever. But I mean, come on, everything has mistakes in it, right? Everything has flaws in it. Everyone makes mistakes and that's not a problem. It's only a problem if you are so hung up on your own perfectionism that you can't learn from the mistakes that you're making, right? Um, when I was younger, I used to, um, I adopted a sort of a catchphrase of my grandfather's. Um, he used to always say, if you won't take the time to do it right, where are you gonna find the time to fix it? And I found that very inspirational as when I was younger. Um, but then I actually realized that I had been putting myself further into the perfectionist trap um, just with that line of thinking. Um, you should try to do it right the first time and you should try to do a good job the first time. You should try to do the best job you can do, but you shouldn't beat yourself up if something isn't perfect. And it's okay to have to go back and fix something later. Um, things fall apart and they have to be fixed all the time. That's okay. Um, I'm a very exact person. I'm a very precise person, but I also allow myself, um, especially in my art practice, 
a little bit of wiggle room. It's okay if things don't line up exactly right. It's, it's okay if that seam didn't end exactly where I wanted it to. I just keep going and I try to make it better on the next one. Um, one of the things I see all the time in some of the craft forums that I'm on, um, I'm on a bunch of knitting forums and sewing forums online, and it seems like the majority of the posts that people make when they're showing off their finished product that they're proud of, the like title of the post will start with something like, oh my God, you guys, it's full of mistakes, but I finally finished this. Or it's anything but perfect, but here's my piece. And I'm reading these and I'm going, my God, you guys, I'm scrolling through my feed and I read this headline of you saying, alert, alert, my thing isn't good enough before I even see the actual amazing thing that you made. We all can see the flaws in our own work, of course, but there's no reason to point them out to other people, especially before you've even shown them the work. That's just silly. Um, but I also used to do that back in the battle days when I was a practicing perfectionist. I would do that same thing. I would show something I had just made to Sean and the first thing I would do would, would be to point out some error or flaw that I had made in the piece. Um, and he would always tell me, stop doing that. So you're just like, you're leading in with shit talking yourself. Just don't go there. Um, Sean is the absolute opposite of a perfectionist, by the way. It's kind of a hilarious opposites attract thing. And I have learned so many lessons from him over the years about just, you know what, just do it. Just go with it. Just don't look back. Let's just go. It's better to go and have it be less than perfect than to sit around agonizing over, oh, should I do it this way? Or should I do it that way? Or, you know, I, I don't like that I did this thing. And so now I'm just gonna let that stick in my craw forever. You know, move past it. It's okay. People make mistakes. Again, that's how we grow. It's how we learn. It's how we do better things. So instead of using my grandfather's old catchphrase about, you know, doing it right the first time, um, over the uh, early years of raising kids, we watched the movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang a whole bunch of times. It's one of my favorites. Um, and there is a scene in the movie where the evil Baron has a uh, dungeon full of elderly scientists and he wants them to make him uh, a flying car like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang as well. And this is an impossible task that they can't do, but they decide to tackle it because they have to. And they sing a great song and the song is from the ashes of disaster grow the roses of success. And I love this idea. And I took it on as my new motto, replacing my grandfather's old motto, um, because it is so much more positive to me. Yeah, things go wrong. But again, if you take the lesson from the things going wrong and you don't get hung up on, oh, oh, it has to be perfect, you can move forwards and that's when you can make something great. And this is in your art practice, in your you know, relationships with other people, in your professional life, whatever. It doesn't have to be perfect. Perfection is a trap. The idea of perfection is a trap. It just, it's a go nowhere. And there are so many people who are what are called failed perfectionists, where they're such a perfectionist, they won't even like let themselves start on something because they've already decided, oh, well, it's gonna go all wrong. And so what's even the point? Well, my friend, the point is to do the thing. You know, maybe the end result isn't what you were expecting. Maybe it isn't the quality that you wanted it to be, but you challenged yourself and you did it and you learned stuff along the way. And then the next time you have a similar challenge or a similar project, you can take all of those lessons that you learned from doing it the first time and make it better. And we should be striving to be better. You know, I talk about that a lot also. You need to practice if you wanna get better, but I reject the idea of practice makes perfect. Practice makes better. That's it. Just be better than you were before or don't. But I mean, I'm striving to be better. But what I'm not striving to be is perfect. So one of the things I challenged myself to do for this vlog was to not wear any makeup, which is me stepping out of my comfort zone. But it's also me accepting this is what I look like. This is my face with no makeup on it. And you know, normally I put on some foundation, some eyeliner, maybe some mascara, whatever, because I feel like it makes me look better on camera and it boosts my confidence a little. And I said to myself today, okay, I'm gonna talk about that I reject the idea of perfection. So I'm going to go ahead and do it barefaced, which was a little bit of a challenge for me, but here I am. Um, and that's okay because we don't have to be perfect, right? And that's not to say you can't wear makeup. I enjoy wearing makeup and I will probably be wearing makeup on my next vlog. 
Um, but you don't always have to, and you don't have to feel like you look terrible if you're not wearing makeup um, or, or anything like that. And you certainly don't have to think of any part of your body as being imperfect or, you know, imperfections that you need to hide. It, it's your body. You should love your body. You've only got one of them. You should treat your body well, you know, don't just run it into the ground. Um, but don't get all hung up on that you're not perfect. None of us are. None of us look perfect. Even the people who look perfect don't look perfect. I mean, newsflash, I don't know if you know how much time it takes hair, makeup, clothes, workouts, all that for supermodels to look the way they do. They don't look like that. None of us do. Um, I don't either. <laughs> um, so that's it. I just want to encourage you guys, if any of you are hung up on this, if any of you have perfectionist tendencies and you let that stop you from doing things because you feel like it's just not going to go right or you beat yourself up a lot about um, perceived mistakes that you've made, let it go. It's okay. Leave it in the past. Learn from it. Like I said, move forwards. Keep going. Just do it. Do that art project. T take a stab at that thing that you've never tried before. Apply for that job that you don't even think you necessarily have a chance of getting. You're never going to know until you try. And if you're too hung up on the idea of perfection or the idea of doing it exactly right or the idea of being in control of things, it's going to stop you. It's going to hold you back. It's not good. I reject it all. Again, do better, but you cannot do perfect. So that's it. On the end note there, I'm going to wish you guys a perfectly good day. Ooh, contradicted myself, but that's okay. I will be back in a few days with my indigo dyeing tutorial on Friday, which I'm really excited to share with you guys. And guess what? I'm sure there's mistakes in it. Uh oh, I said that before I showed you guys the video, but it's okay. Everyone makes mistakes, right? Nobody is perfect. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time.